Alright, so now I'm going to show you another exercise very much like what we just did, only starting with the other shape that starts from the fourth string. We're going to start out with one minor and two major. That being the minor one, major, another major one. So we got. And we can do that same sort of thing on, on higher strings as well. Here's a slow one. Okay, here's another exercise for these arpeggios, and uh, it shows you how to take them across the, the neck. And the final shape, the final, the way it ends, it's, it's a new shape that I haven't showed you, but it's still another way to play a G major arpeggio. And I'll show you that shape first. So basically, it's bar, a hammer on, and then you're barring up here. And the hammer on is happening on the second string. So now I will show you the complete exercise. All right, there I just showed you a uh, major uh, exercise. I mean major as in major third. Um, that takes the arpeggios across the strings. Uh, of course, you can do that in a minor way as well, and I will demonstrate that for you. Okay, so now I'm going to try and show you one more exercise utilizing the other, the secondary shape that I gave you, which was that shape. And that exercise would be like this. Slow. So now I'm going to show you a more advanced sort of exercise uh, technique involving arpeggios and it's kind of like linking them together in a chain. And we're going to go over a chord progression. So you would have... So E minor to B minor. And then we'll go C major to G major. That'll be the end of it, so it would sound like this. And what 
what that what I'm doing there is incorporating two techniques. One is sweeping across the strings, and then the other one is hammering on. And uh, when you combine them, it kind of sounds like what I just did. Okay, I'm going to show you another arpeggio based lick on the higher strings. We're slow. Okay, here's another arpeggio that's higher up on the neck that I can show you, and it goes like this. Slow. Shows that I've been in a lot of different musical situations. I've been in situations with bands and then also as a solo artist where I'm making my music. Um, I think that uh, the nice thing I can say about being in a band situation when it really is a, a band, a real band, uh, when everyone's contributing, which was the case when I was in all the, I was been in only three bands. But the three bands I've been in, it's, they were, it was that kind of situation where everyone would come in with ideas and we would all contribute. Um, that's a cool thing because the end result, you get something that you would not have ever been able to get on your own. Um, you're getting contributions from all sorts of you know, different angles. Like the one band I was in, Vertu, there was, Karen Briggs was a violinist. And she would come up with all kinds of great ideas that were coming from her perspective which to me was new because I had never been in a band with someone who played the violin. So I didn't, you know, it was coming from a different angle for me. And, and I loved it, it was great. Um, you know, being in a band like Poison, these are guys that, that write, you know, or have written hit songs. You know, they, they know how to craft a great song so that the average person can sit down and, and, and listen to it the first time and want to hear it again. And I, and I learned a lot from being with those guys on that level. Um, and then also uh, the other band that I was a part of, Mr. Big, kind of had a little bit of both. You know, they had the, 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 the element of how to write a song that was a hit, like a, like a To Be With You type of song, which was a big hit for Mr. Big. But then also you got Billy Sheehan, who is an incredible bass player, who adds that aspect, you know, and for a guitar player, you go, oh no, there's someone else here that I gotta, I gotta keep it together because if I don't, I gotta keep up with this guy. So that was a cool interaction, being in a situation like that. So you, you take all those musical situations and if you're, if you're paying attention, you can take the best out of all of them. And then when you go back and do your own thing, you can apply that to, to your own music. And I think that happens subconsciously. You know, you don't sit down and say, all right, well, I played in this band with this guy, so I'm going to try and do that. It's like the, the good parts of the influences should come together and help, you know, and add something to you creatively. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, this section here, I'm going to show more uh, scale-oriented licks. Uh, I'm also going to demonstrate uh, some exercises that will help your legato technique and strengthen your left hand.